Hi, welcome to a mini review and teardown of a $16 soldering station. Can you believe it? Yes, 16 bucks I got this thing for from Hobby King here in Australia. Yes, postage was on top of that, but unbelievable. Is it any good for 16 bucks? Well, I guess we'll find out. It is a classic ripoff of the Heiko 936. Goes under many different brands, I'm sure, that you can get on eBay. The uh, 936 has been discontinued for a long time now. Oh, Sagan's playing with my original Heiko 926 that I've had for, what, oh, I don't know, at least 25 years, something like that. Still going strong. And, well, we'll take a look at it. Is this thing any good? May or may, may not be. I don't know. Only one way to find out. You know what we say here on the EEB blog. Don't turn it on. Take it apart. Right, Sagan? Look. You want to turn the camera off? Push that button up there. Okay, Sagan, you want to open it up? Let's have a look what we get inside our Heiko 936 ripoff. What do we get? Look. Look, it's a box. Ah, a box. He's excited. He's excited. What do we get? Oh, look. It's got that cheap Chinese smell, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah you bet. All right. Look at that. Oh, look. Look. It even kind of, sort of, looks like a Heiko 936. It's got a knob. Is that any good? No? No? Is that a thumbs up or a thumbs down, you think? What do you think? Down. down. Thumbs down. Look. We have an iron. Oh, there we go. Oh, Aldi. feels feels pretty crappy quality, doesn't it? Aldi. How does it compare with the 926, Sagan? It's a lot smaller, isn't it? That's smaller. Which one do you like better? That one. That one. Or this one? That one. That one. You like the 926 better. All right. I think Daddy might too, but anyway... Let's check it out. It looks like a Heiko. Doesn't quite smell like a Heiko, but hey, eh, I'm sure it heats up. Maybe. All right, Sagan, the most fun part, pouring it in there. Go, pour it on the sponge. Whoa, look at that. Is it wet? Yeah. Damp enough? Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah? yeah. Beauty. All right, can you wave? Wave bye-bye. Wave, wave bye-bye to everyone. All right. Thanks for helping, dude. And the manufacturer is, well, uh, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, Gangzu Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Just the good old boys. Never mean and no harm. Electronics Equipment Co. Limited. So there you go. It's probably sold under many different brands. Um, the uh, Ohoi brand or whatever it's called. You can get these on eBay, although not nearly as cheap as this Hobby King one. So it looks like this one is straight from their Yeehaw factory. There it is. Look at that. And if you compare it to the genuine Heiko 936, which has been discontinued for a long time, by the way, you can't buy it anymore. It's been replaced, as most people know, by the FX888. Uh, Even that was discontinued. That's been replaced by the FX D now with the digital readout. But anyway, there is the fake one versus the genuine one. Clearly a complete ripoff in every way, shape and form. Now, I suspect that this ESD safe claim here, rather than have proper uh, static dissipative plastics in this thing, I reckon it's just complete marketing wank. One way to test that, I got my surface voltmeter. Now, the way I'm going to test this is very crude. I'm just going to move it over the top like this. I've reset it. Control does the plastic. Yep. Look, it goes up when I move it over the plastic like that. So there is a charge, there is a surface charge on that plastic. But to be fair, that wasn't connected uh, through to mains earth. The mains core wasn't plugged in. It is now plugged in and it's switched on. And there we go. Yeah, our plastic is still building up a charge. Look at that. It's not huge, but hey, it's there. So, you know, I reckon it's just marketing wank on the front because, well, that's what people want to see safe Heiko uh, FX888, the modern one, do that? Well, I haven't even got it plugged in. The mains cord is disconnected. Trust me, I could show you that. But let's reset that and move it over and nothing. There is no static uh, charge build up on that 
plastic case whatsoever. But there is on the rip-off unit. Now my first impression of it is that, well, yeah, you can feel that it's cheap. You can feel it's not a genuine 936. If you've used a 936 like I have in the past, the knob just feels pretty crappy quality. Stuff like I noticed that, I'm not sure if you can see that, but the alignment, look, the pot doesn't even line up with the hole there. The uh, calibration trim pot doesn't even line up. You could probably still get in there, but only barely. The connector looks like the cheapest quality possible. But oh, well, apart from that, the case seems okay. The switch feels all right, but you can just sort of get the feel, you get the vibe that it's not a real Heiko. Even if it had the Heiko badge on it and looked identical, you'd be able to sort of, you know, scratch and feel the difference. And unfortunately the handpiece doesn't fare any better either. I mean, you know, it's got ESD safe stamped on there. Unfortunately I don't have uh, the exact Heiko one to compare it with, but yeah, the, just the rubber doesn't feel quality, doesn't feel like it's going to last. And it comes with, by the way, just a conical tip like that. Absolutely useless uh, for most general purposes, as I've uh, pointed out before. Um, if you're going to buy this, at least go and get a proper genuine Heiko tip, which should fit, which we'll try out uh, later. And I can take this apart, and of course it's not a genuine uh, Heiko, it doesn't have Heiko stamped on there at all. This all feels really loose and rather rather dodgy, and uh, shame I don't have a real direct competitor to compare it to, but you know, I, it doesn't instill a lot of confidence in me, that's for sure. The connector feels like the lowest uh, quality possible, but hey, you know, you expect it to be built down to a price at $16 for goodness sake. So yeah, I'm not going to be too hard on it. It's exactly what I expect. I don't expect Heiko quality. And if I actually compare it to my original uh, Heiko 900 handpiece here, and as I said, uh, I've had this iron for like 25 plus years and it is still going strong. This is still the original handpiece and the original ceramic element as well. I've changed the tip, you know, quite a few times as you'd expect, but it's still the original ceramic element and it just feels much better quality than this thing. It's hard to convey on camera, it really is, but hey, as I said, I don't expect it. Eh, it's just, yeah, it's not as good and that's exactly what I expected. And the stand, well, it's all plastic. It's got a little bit of metal on the bottom there, so you can uh, clean out the crud which accumulates on the bottom. But yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not that great at all. But hey, it does does have a uh, nice um, solid well in there, so it, it collects the water, it doesn't drain out on your bench. Eh, it does the job. What do you expect? Mm, mm. And we'll take it apart here, and once again. I don't expect uh, anything more than $16 construction. I mean, <laughs> I mean, $16 for goodness sake. So we're basically looking to make sure that a it's at least safe and uh, well, it at least works. That's pretty much all you want. Does it work and is it safe? You, you know, it's not going to be good quality and it's probably not going to last you 25 years like my original Heiko did. So, yeah, I'm not going to be overly harsh in that respect because it is... Uh, I don't know of a cheaper soldering station. You can get cheaper soldering irons, but they're the, just the crap irons which plug directly into the mains. I mean, this is, for all, ta-da, all intents and purposes, a Heiko 936, or you should at least, which we'll test later, be able to take the genuine Heiko tips because it's all about the tips, uh, really, apart from as long as... This in here is decent quality, and I don't mind the look of that transformer. It looks pretty good, and yes, you have to buy the specific voltage model. This is the Australian model, and it did come with the proper plug, with the uh, nicely approved uh, uh, insulation on the pins and everything. So if you're in the US market, you have to buy the US one. There is no taps in this, just like all of the Heiko irons. Transformers are specifically matched for the specific mains voltage. 240 volts, 24 volts AC out, exactly like the Heiko one. It's got some sort of uh, certificate number compliance, but it actually looks like decent build quality. It looks like the laminations are 
tightly packed on there. I didn't when I powered it on before without the iron attached. I didn't hear any uh, anything from it, and it looks like what we have up here is a board for the switch. There it is. Look at that. Oh. Ugh. So yes, look, the solder hasn't flown on the other side of that, but hey, it is on that side, and I'll, it's it's not dangerous. I'll I'll call that adequate. Um, certainly for the price, I won't be uh, too critical on that. Can I get that back in there? No, I'll get that back in there later. Anyway, we have a PCB mount fuse on there. Nothing fancy, but hey, at least it is fused. Bonus. Now I don't particularly like just the soldered earth tag like that, should be crimped properly, although it is going directly to the transformer straight from the mains input, hey, so that's at least they've done that right, but yeah, the soldering is not the best method for that. So yeah, I don't think that's adequate, whether or not it's unsafe or, you know, you're relying on that solder joint crimp is much better and in fact it may not, I'm not even sure about the technicalities of that being legal actually soldering the uh, tab directly on there. If anyone actually knows the uh, wiring uh, standards for equipment internal off by heart in Australia at least, uh, let us know but yeah that should be crimped but it is connected. <laughs> better than nothing. And they claim the mains cable 0.75 square millimetres, is it? Well, there you go. It's not the worst I've seen. I'm not actually going to measure it, but I'll call it adequate. I don't think it is actually 0.75 square millimetres, though, but I stand to be corrected. Now, check out the PCB, and yes, it does look as bad as you would expect for your $16. Oh, I'll, show, I'll get the macro lens out and show you the close-up around here, but it's pretty crusty. We've got some increased um, uh, current uh, capability on the traces there with the tinned copper. I believe that's the same inside the Heiko. I'll show a proper side-by-side -side photo at the moment. I found one on the internet um, that actually compares a genuine one and the genuine Heiko and the fake one. And, well, you can see that it is, uh, it, I'm pretty sure it is different circuitry. We'll have a look at the uh, schematics at the moment, but, oh, yeah, it looks pretty poor, let me tell you. In fact, I think it's been a bit more generous on camera than what it actually looks in real life. Pretty crusty. Mm. There we go. Look at the state-of-the-art solder in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is pretty crusty, let me tell you. Oh, goodness. And uh, the main uh, triac here, yeah, 600 volt uh, triac, I don't know. Is it, like, is there a brand name on that? I don't think so. That's just some generic part. And uh, the screw has started, to, uh, it just looks pretty awful. Yeah, whereas that's the difference. In the genuine Heiko one, you would get a proper spec branded part. It'd be a specific manufacturer. They would have tested it thoroughly, and they wouldn't be substituting with whatever part they can get at the Shenzhen market this week. You know, that's that's pretty much it. Oh, I don't even want to know the brand of the cap, do we? Ugh, what is that? Nothing. Mmm, rusty. Look at the nut holding and washer holding that pot on the front panel. And there's the top of the board, and well, yeah, it's pretty darn ordinary. About as bad as you would expect for this price. It really is pretty darn awful. And here is a photo I found on the net, so credit uh, goes to whoever uh, did this. I'll try and find the name. But uh, yeah, they compared uh, the original uh, Aiko with the fake one, um, which this one is, it's just a variant of it, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same variant, but uh, yeah, you'll notice that the genuine Heiko has uh, basically two chips on it. It's got an LM324 uh, quad op amp plus another 8-pin dip uh, package as well, whereas this one here only has the single 8-pin dip package and that's it. So clearly they're not duplicating the Heiko circuitry exactly. They're skimping in some way, shape, or form. And there it is. That chip looks like it's secondhand. The pins are actually rusted on it. It is pretty awful. It really is. I can see an ST brand mark there. There we go, but it's an LMR358, so just a dual op amp there. And that is just oh, awful. It really is. 
Atrocious. Look at that. It looks like they just sucked it out of something and it's a second-hand chip they bought on the second-hand market. Whoa. And we'll check to see if the barrel is mains earthed referenced and yes of course it is that's why they got their green earth wire going down to the main connector down there just like a genuine Heiko one so no problems there except as i said for that internal mains wiring in there I, you're reliant upon that solder joint directly on that earth tab there or two solder joints on that earth tab for your iron to be properly earthed and your uh, transformer chassis to be earthed so yeah really not acceptable if you're going to buy one of these i'd recommend going inside and tidying that up and putting in a proper earth connection on there with a proper crimp lug connection and the other thing on these the uh flexible nature of the lead no it's just crappy pvc it doesn't to be seen to be anything special really so there's only one thing left to do that's power it up and actually try it does it work i've got two brand new genuine Heiko tips here these are the real mccoy big fat wedge on them i think they're 3.2 yeah 3.2 millimeter uh wedge on these so i'm going to put identical tip on this yeehaw brand and my Heiko 926 so that we can at least get some comparisons now the 936 was supposed to be I believe better thermal capacity than the 926 so hey if it can perform the same as the 926 eh, that's you know, that's pretty good now the yeehaw brand tip is very loose on there very loosey-goosey just slides in and out like it's nothing but the Heiko tip is really quite tight and it won't go further than that with that without significant force and i tried the uh heiko fx triple eight tip i've got on that iron it's exactly the same thing and the inner sleeve actually comes out of that but that's uh, very common when these heiko bits get stuck so yeah i've got to sort of gently prize it down i think it's down anyway there we go i can get that on and uh yeah, so not the best compatibility with genuine Heiko tips. And really, I would only trust the genuine Heiko tips on these. Tips are everything on your soldering iron. Get the genuine ones. Nothing worse than the cheap-ass eBay ones. They're horrible. But, uh, hey, if you don't do a lot of soldering, eh, they're going to do the job. But, jeez, you get what you pay for. Actually, it just occurred to me a good genuine Heiko tip or two is going to cost more than this entire iron. Ugh. It's not, actually, no, don't use genuine Heiko tips. If you're going to get one of these $16 Yeehaw brand irons, uh, use the cheap tips. Okay, let's fire it up and see what happens. Here we go. Whoa, the red lead comes on. It's heating. Will it work? I.e., does it get hot? That's the hot in there. Come on. We expect to see some uh, smoke, because I believe this is a brand new... Uh, brand new Heiko tip I've got on there so it's taking its fat time I probably should have timed this um, come on come on there we go it works it got hot yay and I'm going to attempt to measure the temperature of the tip here. I've got my fluke thermocouple. I've got some solder on the uh, tip, so we're getting reasonably good thermal contact. You know, it, it's not ideal. We just don't have a proper uh, tip uh, thermometer here, but it's probably going to be good enough, and you can see it uh, flickering. I've got it set for 250 uh, Celsius there, so factory calibration is what we're basically uh, checking. I'm sure that if I tweak the pot on the front, eh, I could get that temperature up there, but it's relatively stable at uh, 235 there. Now, I've got both of them set to 250, and because as we saw, different circuitry inside these things, you'll notice the different... Uh, look, we sort of got some, you know, flickering of the heating lead there, whereas the Heiko has always been, the 936, I believe, is exactly the same as this. It just gives that constant on, off. You know, this thing is just like there's some oscillation there or something like that happening in the heating element. It's not the same, exactly the same control circuitry as the Heiko here. And, hey, that's to be expected because it is 
different circuitry. They've minimized it and changed it in some respect. Whether or not that's good or bad, eh, I don't know. It's just different. And there you go, there's my Heiko 926, which I have not touched the calibration on since I bought it like 25 years ago. And there we go, it's not too far off 250. Yes, I've got it set to 250 on the dial. Beauty. And once again, just like the other one, um, it's pretty stable. Well, it's a temperature-controlled soldering station. It does what it claims. Now, let's try a large thermal mass item like this big heat sink here. We'll try and heat up the underside there on there at uh, some various temperatures and see how it goes and compares with the Heiko 926. Alright, let's start off with not that heatsink but a big ass gauge wire like this one. This is the other end of it soldered into this board. So I've got both irons set to say 300. Just pick an arbitrary uh, temperature. I'll apply some solder to the tip so that we could get good initial um, uh, contact, thermal contact to that pad and see how it goes. First up, the clone. Okay, here we go. I've got it set to 300. This is the uh, this is the clone one 300 degrees C. Oh no, no! Come on, let's feed some more in there. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. No, it doesn't like 300 at all. There's no way we're going to get. No, there's not enough thermal capacity in that iron at 300. Not that I don't expect to. I haven't done a control with the Heiko yet. Uh, let's try the Heiko one. Okay, here we go. The Heiko, same tip, same temperature, 300 degrees C. And I almost got the impression it's starting to take there. It is. It is. That could be because of the uh, calibration difference but that is certainly starting to take there we go yep yep that's working the Heiko 926 better at 300 at a factory set 300 degrees there we go that's that joint is completely wet now now just to confirm that because I did the Yeeha one first and well that could have uh, added heat to the joint which then the Heiko finished it off so I'll actually go back to the Yeeha at 300 Celsius after having used the Heiko and see if I can ever get it to apply a lot of downward force on this by the way and no I just no it oh yeah there we go there we go maybe maybe but nah nah this thing just does not have the thermal capacity at 300 Celsius can't do it and no doubt there'll be some curious to know how does my high thermal capacity JBC iron here uh, do and I've got it set lower to 270 let's try it this is a high thermal capacity iron with a big wedge tip look at that even two it's showing it's showing it's dropped down to 265 on the uh, on on the display on the JBC but that has no problem even set to 270 degrees Celsius that's the difference between like the the Heiko 926 struggled at uh, 300 but got there but the JBC one just yeah went straight through it at 270 no problem all right we're back on the Yeeha one it's set to 350 degrees Celsius by the way of course I'm using Celsius sorry for all you Yanks who can't think in Celsius but uh, that's all just under 700 it's like 680 degrees uh, Fahrenheit by the way and really that is struggling so that's the Yeeha at 350 oh yeah we're getting there we're getting there we're getting there hold on to your hat folks yep it can do it at 350 I mean you know it, it can be made to work I that's the problem with low thermal capacity irons is that well you've got to turn up the temperature to compensate and a lot of people ask that. Why, you know, if the melting point of temper, uh, melting point of solder is so low, why does your temperature or a standard tip like on a Weller, why is it like, you know, 380, like 700 degrees Fahrenheit, like 360 or something like that degrees Celsius? Why? It's thermal capacity. That's why it doesn't have that temperature on the tip is going to drop. Now, it's uh, it's quite involved to actually get proper temperature measurements of a solder joint when it actually goes down. So I won't try and do that today. Of course, I don't really have the setup to do that uh, properly and do it justice. But 
yeah, this Yeeha soldering iron ain't that great, but it does actually work. Uh, what the heck, I will actually attempt to get the temperature of this junction down here with the Yeeha. Yeeha! That's... I'm in the molten part of it down there, and look, yeah, it's barely, it's not even getting to 200. Look at that. It's not even there. But the solder is melting. There you go, at that joint. Because it's above the melting point of that cell. I'm just using standard 6040 uh, tin stuff here, and it would have been tin on there to begin with on this uh, particular board. But there you go. It's barely at 200 with this iron set to 350. In fact, it's set to 700 Celsius, about 360 degrees C. Same thing with the JBC. Here we go. I got the JBC once again set for uh, 270. Okay, whereas this Yeeha was set for 360. So let me get in there and try and measure that. Yeah, I'm in exactly the same spot. I'm not actually touching the iron tip. I'm actually on the molten solder, sort of like on the opposite side of it. And that's getting to like 215, the solder down in the joint. I'm really on the opposite side of that joint now. And you can see that that JBC is heating that up much better on the joint itself, all over the joint on the opposite side, even though it is set to 270 degrees C, much lower than the Yeeha. That is the difference between a high thermal capacity iron and a low thermal capacity $16 iron. Big difference. And let's try the heatsink here. And with my HK96, by the way, my HK96 set to 350 on the 926. And well, yeah, it can uh, certainly heat that up. No problem at all. I mean, it's not the solid heat. I mean, it is going through the heat sink, but it's like the tag attached to the heat sink. So it's not like a big chunk of aluminium, of course. Now, let's try the Yeeha at, uh, th once again, at 350. And, yep, it is, it is flowing. It is certainly flowing on the Yeeha. It doesn't feel quite as good as the Heiko 926, but obviously this is a lower... Uh, thermal mass uh, junction, the heatsink, like the clip go into the hats, that heatsink, then the big copper wire that we had soldered in down here. I mean, look, it can't, and I mean, that's a, just a massive, that copper, it's just a massive amount of it down there. So even though we're, we're so, trying to solder to a heatsink, look, can't do that copper. That copper just, just uh, sinks all that heat away and just can't do it, can't do it. But there's usually nothing you can't fix by turning up the temperature. That's why the temperature on these things go, goes so high. I've now got the Yeeha set to 400 Celsius. And look, there we go. That is the correct temperature to set your uh, soldering station at, or this Yeeha one, anyway, to do this joint. So that is the difference. The Yeeha has to be set to 400 Celsius to really flow that joint. Uh, properly and quickly, whereas something like the high capacity JBC easily did it at 270 degrees C on the dial. So, really, that you know, big difference. But yeah, the Yeeha, not as good as even the older Heiko 926. And for those curious to see inside the classic uh, Heiko 926, there it is. Uh, no control board on the front panel. They've got the wiring and the switches uh, and the lead going down to the PCB underneath there. And uh, mains transformer at the back. And that's about all she wrote. But you will note, of course, as I was talking about, properly crimped earth connector down to there. Not just soldered onto the tab. How unreliable. That's what you want. Look at the nice little attention to detail on the wire twist there. They've added that to that one and that one over there as well. Instead of just wiring them separate willy-nilly, they have actually gone to the trouble to twist them. I like it. And for those curious to know, that was the drive waveform there on the Heiko 926, the element waveform. And, of course, no difference on the Yeeha one, where basically uh, it's just that Triac is just switching on the uh, AC, the 24 volts AC directly to the element. So, eh, 
And it's exactly what you'd expect. And well, overall, what can you say? It's a $16 soldering station. You get $16 worth of quality. Um, in fact, you probably get more quality than the 16 bucks. I don't know how they make it for that. And they can sell it retail for that. They don't make it for that. They obviously sell it for less. Unbelievable. But yeah, bitch and moan all you want. There's no way I'm giving a crap quality soldering station like this a thumbs up. It is. It's got to be a thumbs down. I don't care what you say. But hey... If you've only got, if you're so cash strapped that you can only spend this sort of money for a soldering iron, then fine, get one. You know, it works. It won't, may not last you very long, but it's going to work. It's going to at least, it's a proper temperature controlled soldering station instead of those crap little fixed solder, fixed temp ones you just plug into the power point. They're just garbage. Don't touch them. At least get one of these as an absolute bare minimum and it's probably going to suit beginners and stuff like that but no nah, I'm always a big fan of buying a top quality brand name soldering iron that lasts you a long time I think it's better value overall in the long run even though this thing is one tenth the price you know you buy 10 of these for the cost of one uh, proper Heiko FX triple eight but what can you say I don't care I don't like cheap ass soldering irons but if you do meh yeah, whatever. Go buy one. I don't care. Just don't tell me about it, please. Ugh. Catch you next time.